we have just finished the first season with Geng, and I have no complaints about this season at all. It went better than I expected, and here's how it finished. So in the previous recap, we finished off just before the first Juventus game in the Champions League, looking for our first win in the group stage, and I didn't go into the game full of that much hope, but here are the highlights of the Juventus game. Absolutely ridiculous. Sadio. Oh no, actually, ball into Thorsveld. Thorsveld could be in here. Thorsveld. Thorsveld. <laughs> Thorsveld. We're leading against Juventus. Our first highlight, our first goal. Oh no, actually, oh, Thorsveld run is just perfect. We're beating. We're leading against Juventus. Just before halftime as well. Perfect time to score. Oh, look. He just ran around that guy. Gets the ball in. Gets the cross in. Arezzo's back post. We're 2 0 up! Come on! 2 0 up before half time! Two goals in two minutes! Come on! Come on! He just dribbled right round this fella here. Who's he dribbled past? Chiesa! Chiesa had no chance! Look at this! Come on! 2 0 up against Juventus! Away! In the Allianz Arena! 10 minutes left of this game. Danilo, he gets a cross in to the back post, Rabio brings it down to Sandro. Locatelli, we can somehow launch a counter attack here, it'd be nice. Danilo Kuliseski, he's shot. Oh, they've scored! Five minutes of added time, why is it five minutes of added time? 92 minutes, okay, we've got a corner. Tresser in, Amadusic, hit the crossbar! 95th minute, referee! This is, that's a big win. That is a huge win. We beat Juventus. We beat Juventus. So we somehow managed to beat Juventus in Turin. I was not expecting that. I was absolutely delighted. And then we had the return leg at our stadium. Corner, corner. Onoachi, where are you? There you are. There you are. There you are. <laughs> Onoachi with the corner. 1-0 to Genk. Come on, guys. Come on. This is what we want. Near post corners. There's the big man. He towers over everybody. He puts it in the far corner. Keeper stood no chance. We're 1 0 up. I don't like this. 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 Get rid of this. Oh! Oh! They hit both posts. They hit both posts. Right, stop with the Juventus highlights. Oh, oh Lucimi. He's got a room. Plays it to Rezo. Back to the. Oh no, at you. Mondonga! Mondo <laughs> oh, sorry, cheer. Come on. Come on. Come on. If, like, if you said to me that I would be leading Juventus 2 0 at home in the Champions League before this save started, I'd be like, yeah, right. Not in the first season. But the fact that we've beaten him already and we're doing it now at home. He gave a ball away straight away. Here's Keane. Keane's in one on one with the keeper. Van der Voort is MVP of this game. <gasps> no! Ah, oh, damn it! Break the team. <laughs> no way! Offsides, referee! Offsides! Referee, he's offsides! He's offsides. Has to be offsides. Don't do this to me. Ha <sighs> ha! I'm, why is there always five minutes of out of time? 92 minutes, 93 minutes, 94 minutes, 95 minutes, referee blow the whistle. <laughs> and that puts us above Porto. Juventus in the mud. They're bottom of the group. That's right. We beat Juventus home and away in the Champions League. Two 2-1 two, wins. It didn't guarantee more European football for us because... This group was so tight. Porto beat Chelsea. They could still overtake us. It was it was absolutely ridiculous. So we went into the Porto game knowing that if we win, we have secured our place in the knockout rounds of the Champions League. Oh no, actually, get into the box, man. There he is, there he is. Cross in. Bundonga! Yes! Here we go, Bundonga. That was a nice bit of play there. One, five, five minutes of out of time again. It's always five minutes of out of time with us. But no, there's a corner. There's a corner. Don't do this. Oh, Nielsen. Oh. 
absolutely massive. Oh, Chelsea, Chelsea and Juventus haven't played. Have, have, they haven't played yet. They haven't played yet. But we are through to the next round. We are through. We, we got through of that group that contained Juventus and Porto. We are going through the next round in the Champions League. Managing to beat Porto assured us of getting into the knockout rounds. However, we had a chance of going through top of our group. If we managed to draw against Chelsea or beat them, we were top of the group. Did they take Lukaku off? No, not Werner! Ah, no! <laughs> Team of Werner, Team of Werner of all people. So it wasn't quite meant to be. We did qualify from the group in second place. But look how tight this group was. Chelsea finished first with 10 points. Us second, also with 10 points. Juventus with nine, Porto with six. This was a really tough group. And I'm super proud that we managed to actually get out of this group. In amongst all those Champions League games, we were romping in the league, absolutely winning most of our games. We did X out of the cup in the seventh round. I did rotate the side quite heavily. And we lost to that game. And then we did lose to Antwerp. I don't think that was a good result for us. But the league overall was going very well. We were building up a decent lead at the top of the table. But our focus was on the Champions League and our next opponent, Liverpool. We faced them at home in the first leg. And this is probably one of my best games I've ever had in Football Manager. He still has the ball. Is he going to get the ball across? He does. Amada scored. Come on, get in. Get in! Let's go! Come on! 1 0! I, I don't like this early, early highlight. Keita, go backwards. There's Fabino. Henderson. Salah. Fabino. Oh, right. Oh. <sighs> All right. All right. That's pretty bright, right? The, the bait. That's the worst way to start the second half. Like, the worst way you can start the second half. What can you create here? Get the ball in. It's in. Amada scored again! <laughs> Amada scored again! Oh, it's crazy, crazy stuff. How have we done this again? Clear it out. Clear it away. Here's Onoachi. Oh, why is it even challenging for that? Oh, no, no, no! That's unfair, that is. That's unfair. Throw in, throw, throw, throw. Oyen, Arezzo. Back to Oyen. Cross in. Oh, not you! Oh! Oh! No! Referee! Referee! No! No! It counted! It counts! No, he wasn't offside! He was not offside! Referee! 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 Come on! Come on, referee! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Oh, oh, hang on. First, before we before we get, let's we need to be, but we need to. Oh, why can't I make changes when it's paused? This is ridiculous. Oh, no, at you. No more highlights. No more highlights. No more highlights. I mean, I mean, I mean. Come on, the heck with that. How? 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 How have we how how have we done this? That's right. We beat Liverpool 3-2 with a 92nd minute winner. Absolute scenes, crazy stuff. We were ahead in that tie. But we had to go to Anfield, and we know Anfield makes such a big difference. Oh, Jesus. We're just getting Oh, what oh. After that first half as well. After that first half, you was like, you was thinking, could you? Uh, a bit of perspective. You're playing one of the best teams in Europe. I, 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 I know, I know, I know. It's just after that, that first game was just ridiculous as well. This one just, just hurts. We played so well over a game and a half of football. It was just in that last 45 minutes where Liverpool's quality just, just overcame us. And it was really disappointing. And looking back at it now, I realize that we are like five steps ahead of where we should have been. We should not have qualified from that group. We should not even be facing Liverpool in the Champions League knockout rounds in our first season. We have done so well to get to that stage. 
And I think I forgot about that at the time. I was a bit disheartened about losing 6-2 to Liverpool. But we did such an amazing job. And the amazing job continued in the league. When it got to the split, we had a 28 point advantage over second place. And after the split, that dropped down to 14. But second place Circle Bruges drew their first game in the group. Which meant if we beat Club Bruges, we win the league. Oh no, it's you in the box! There he is, there he is. Nice bit of play. Ortega. He gets a ball in. He just can't stop Onoachu in the box. We won the league. In the first game of the championship group. Gotta love that. Love that. And boy did we beat them. A resounding 4-0 win. Wrapping up a really great first season with the club. So in the normal league stage we finished with 89 points. 34 games played. 29 wins. 3 draws. 3 losses. 66 goal difference, second place Union with 61. And after the six extra games we played, we'd won 34 of them, drawn three, lost three, 85 goal difference and finishing on 61 points. Matias Arezzo, absolutely outstanding striker, 43 goals in the season. Onuachu chipping in with 24 goals himself. We're ahead in the average ratings, the top three are our places. Onuachu getting 11 assists, 11 assists from the big man. Rezo with the 9 player of the matches and 22 clean sheets for Van de Voort. So I won the league thinking I was going straight into the Champions League group stage. Brilliant. And then I get the email saying they've slipped in the club coefficients. And look at this here. We've lost our group stage qualification. We now have to go through qualifiers to get to the Champions League. I was absolutely raging. Here we are, Belgium in 13th. Club Bruges completely let me down in the Champions League. I'm pretty sure that score, the 7.3, is all down to me. So we've slipped in the rankings. Next season, the 2.6 will come off. Hopefully we do well, get through the group stage again, get on a good show, and we can get back up, up the rankings. Another disappointment was we only moved up one place in the club rankings. We are 54th, but if we look here, the last score I counted is a zero. The one we just posted was an 18. So we can continue doing what we're doing We'll move this club up the rankings in no time. Internationally though I've had a bit of a tougher time with it. We started as the number one ranked nation in the world. With me in charge it dropped down to two and then dropped down to three. We are now back up to number two. I'm, it's just a bit more of a struggle to get the national team working. And I know what you're thinking. You've got Lukaku, you've got De Bruyne. I know it's those two guys that are saving me every single time. We had the 3-2 game against Belarus where Lukaku got a hat-trick. 91st minute penalty and then the 3-0 win against Czech Republic again another Lukaku hat-trick and we've been mixing and matching our formations just can't find something that clicks for everyone we had a draw against Germany which I think was all right but then we started off our Nations League so we have Denmark, Croatia and Spain in our group I tried a 4-4-2 against Denmark it did absolutely nothing until I switched to a 4-2-3-1 I know, very standard, but after we did that, we scored three goals, so I was quite happy with that. And we used the same formation again with Croatia, winning that game 3-1. So in the Nations League, we are top of the group with six points, Spain also won six points. So that next game against Spain, massive. But the club is 100% on the right track, I think. We are improving the squad. We now have state-of-the-art training facilities, state-of-the-art youth facilities. We need to improve our reputation and our finances are secure. So I think we're definitely building this club up. And we had our youth intake and our youth intake was pretty good. It was a somewhat golden generation, if you say. We have three players who are down as elite talents. Three players also down as top talents. Probably the pick of the bunch is Oud Shabhab, six foot Moroccan defender. 15 years old, he already has 14 jumping reach. We're going to work on all his attributes. He's down his 5 star potential, so I'm hoping he comes good. And if you follow me on Twitter, I tweeted out that I found this guy. Well, I say I found. My recruitment team found this guy. And he was A rated. But the value was down as 12k. As in £12,000. For this fella, 17 year old Brazilian. 18 flair, 16 technique, 15 finishing, 14 dribbling. A lot of things to like about him. Some things that, yes, could be improved. Work rate, stamina, strength. But we can work on that. He's still 17. This guy had a minimum fee release clause for foreign clubs of £11,750. 
12,000 pounds release clause for a player of this quality, I think, is nuts. So, you know what I did? I 100% signed him. So, with the current squad, I've got quite a big squad and I've got an abundance of midfielders. We have quite a lot of players out on loan. I'm pretty much going to try and sell all these players that are out on loan, apart from Swedberg and Fire Ass. Those guys are going to be staying. The rest, I'm going to 100% try and sell. And I think I'm going to have to try and sell some first team players as well. Thorsdal is likely going to be on the chopping block. He's 23 years old now. You know, he's a, he's a decent midfielder. If I can get 6.75 million, 6 million, 5 million for him, I would probably take it. I think if we look at Thorsdal compared to somebody like Bruno Gomez, Bruno Gomez is a couple years younger, a bit more potential, and Diamandi is my main playmaker in that midfield. So I struggle to play Thor's belt anyway, so that's why he's probably number one on the chopping block. The other position I'm going to look to try and improve is left back. Ortega is a really good left back. For the way that we play, having players like Onoachi, we need our crossing to be slightly better. We can't really have it as 10. Defensively, he's very good. Determination could be better. He's 23 years old now. And he's already got a bid on him from Watford. We'll be getting 7 million up front, 3 million over the next couple of seasons. So if I can get that money added to my transfer budget, I can maybe go and buy a decent left back replacement. Finance wise, we're doing very well. 22 million in the bank. I've got a transfer budget of just under 10 million. And I've previously moved some of the transfer budget into the wage budget just so I could. A bit more wiggle room there. So if I can bring in funds, we could definitely improve the side quite a bit, I think. And the left back I am looking at is Raquel May from Vasco da Gama. 19 years old. He has a release clause of 10.5 million. If I can get that money for Ortega, this is likely where it's going to be spent. He's got the pace and agility, dribbling, crossing is better. My tactic seems to attack down the left hand side quite a lot, so I want a player who's pretty attacking. That does mean defensively he may not be the best. 8 tackling, 10 marking, 10 positioning. Let me know down in the comments what you would do. Would you try and keep Ortega? Forget about the 7 million that you're going to get straight up front. Or would you go for Raquel May? Or what other left back would you go for? In my mind, because he's 19, we can get him in. He's already pretty well established attacking wise. And we can work on his defensive attributes. So that is season 1 in the books. We won the league. Hopefully we can improve on that and make more inroads into the Champions League. And I'm really, really enjoying the save. Absolutely loving this save. But if you do want to catch this save, it's streamed live on my Twitch. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, please make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. And cheerio.